Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benut. you're watching Israeli News Live, and it is a pleasure to be with you again, once again, here on World Harvest Television, and we trust that last week's uh, message was a blessing to you. Now, we will be making several changes and modifications to the program here over the next several weeks, so do bear with us as we get our own graphics and inside things here put together at the uh, studio so that it will be a better visual uh, information for you. But uh, today we're definitely going into yet again another prophetic impact. Uh, and this time we're looking at North Korea. How does North Korea play in biblical prophecy uh, in the news? And some people might think, well, it doesn't seem like to me, Steve, that it's really anywhere prophetically. It may surprise you. It may surprise you. And uh, so we're going to go into this. We're going to actually go to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. We're going to move all the way down. We're going to start in verse 40. We'll touch on verse 39 and conclude it all the way down to verse 44 throughout this broadcast, examining the news that's happening uh, over throughout from the Middle East all the way to the Far East there and see is there a possibility that in fact North Korea plays a part in all of this? And I think you might be surprised. And by the way, I'm going to try to get you guys caught up on some of the prophecy insights that we have taught on Israeli News Live over the course of the last several years, in fact, try to catch up on some of these things that are going on over the next couple of broadcasts here, uh, just so it can be a blessing to you. And no doubt, I, I, I really encourage you, you may want to have your friends tune in every Saturday night, 10 p.m. Eastern time, as far as the Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, and backing on up in those time frames there for these uh, prophetic insights and how the world events are impacting what's going on. And don't forget, check us out, IsraeliNewsLive.org. There's always the latest videos are always on our website there. You can also check us out on uh, YouTube, Israeli News Live there, uh, among, amongst uh, several other things. And uh, so let's get right into the broadcast here without wasting any more time. Daniel chapter 11, let's start with verse 40. And at that time, the end shall the king of the south push at him. The king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. Now highlighted in yellow, and he shall enter into the countries. I think this is very important in the Hebrew language. I highlighted it as well. Uva barots. Uh, which is exactly the same thing. He will co are coming uh, to the lands, and it is in the plural. Even in Hebrew, it is in the plural. It's very important to note this uh, as well, that it is in the plural. And also, let me just say, state some one other thing as well. When we're looking at North Korea as a prophetic impact, we are definitely not here suggesting that North Korea is the king of the north. Uh, this is not our intentions with this broadcast here, but we're going to, as we go through this broadcast, we're going to share some things with you that may really begin to make you scratch your head and think about things differently the way prophecy has looked at today. Uh, let's move right on. Let's go down. I want to go next to verse 44. Let's look at verse 44 for just a moment as we begin to look at the news and how things are playing out. And that's in verse 44. But tidings out of the east now the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. The Hebrew word there, as you can see, yabahalahu, yabahalahu, is the very Hebrew word we're looking at for trouble. It's another way we can translate that is to cause a great anxiety or, or it trembles him, in other words. Who is it trembling? It's trembling the king of the north is who this is trembling. And what is that? What's trembling him? It's the tidings. It's, it's some, it is an information that has come from the east and, and from the north, something that has happened there that is causing him a great anxiety. And because of that great anxiety, the Bible says, Daniel tells us that therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Hey guys, that's not very good. That is not a good sign. Now, jeez, uh, I got I to tell you something now. When when we begin to look at what we're going to see here, it's really going to amaze you to, to recognize what this is all about. Uh, all right, now let me, let me just stop for just a moment and just remind you, share something with you here, guys. You remember how from the very beginning when Russia got involved with Syria, 
That caused many biblical scholars to begin to look at Daniel 11.44 because tidings out of the east and out of the north. And it wasn't just because Russia got involved with Syria, but it was also because China was beginning to start to get involved. Now, China never came over like Russia did as far as a military presence in Syria. And it also caused a great concern amongst scholars as far as Ezekiel 38.39 the Gog of Magog war in Russia, and so many uh, scholars believe that Russia is that king of the north, uh, or the, excuse me, or the Gog of Magog, not just the king of the north, but of the Gog of Magog as well. But there are a select, of, uh, select group of scholars that actually do not believe that Russia is the Gog of Magog, or that Russia is the king of the north. All right, now we're going to, we're going to, no, won't so much touch on the Gog of Magog in this case here, but we will be going into the King of the North a bit more, especially in light of the fact of Daniel 11:44, speaking about tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him, and scholars recognizing that this is Russia and China. Well, if Russia is the one from the north in Daniel 11:44, and the trouble him, by the way, happens to be the King of the North, then Russia cannot be the King of the north. But I'm going to challenge you on something here in just a moment. So let's move forward. Now, how many of you guys remember uh, there was a leaked audio? We actually brought this out before it even hit the news on mainstream media. Carry an leaked audio. I lost the argument for a the use of force is one of the things he states in this uh, there's, a, there's some other things. That, you know, we actually brought it up CNN.com on October the 4th, 2016, when they first brought this out. Uh, and we also noted ourselves some things they don't mention in the actual article on CNN. But CNN, of course, their title of the article, Carry an Elite Audio, I Lost the Argument for the Use of Force in Syria. Here's some of what they quote there. The problem is the Russians don't care about international law, and we do. This is John Kerry speaking. And we don't have a basis our lawyers tell us, unless we have a Security Council resolution, he said. Now, that was on CNN. Now, I put a note in here myself, and this is what I noted. Kerry went on to say in the same leaked audio, China and Russia have the power to veto such resolutions. Now, that's not a direct quote. He just spoke about those resolutions that, that is mentioned in the CNN report, the Security Council resolutions, you know, where he says that our lawyers tell us unless we have the Security Council resolution. But John Kerry does go on to mention that Russia and China have veto power. He says this in this leaked audio, and that causes him of a concern. But here's what we noticed, noted that he did say, though, on the tape. It says, in the secret recording that was leaked to the public, Kerry also noted Russia came in. That's a problem, I know. In other words, they really weren't anticipating Russia's presence coming into Syria at that time. And I found that kind of interesting, uh, that, that they did not anticipate that at all. And yet at the same time, when we look at Syria and the fact that Syria and China were involved, um, with the Syrian equation there. They, they jumped into this. They interfered with the so-called civil war that was going on inside of Syria. And as we mentioned in the last broadcast, 35 plus nations uh, are people representative from 35 different nations and how uh, Isaiah 17 brought this out to light. All these nations entering into this country. Uh, clearly, this is not just a civil war. It's much different from that. Now, Russia came in at the invitation of the Syrian government, and they vowed to be able to fight against ISIS and those terrorist groups uh, inside of the country to give Syria an upper hand in trying to take back their country. Uh, but as many as scholars that consider this as being a fulfillment, maybe, of Daniel 11.44, or the possibility, um, then we have to take a, a very serious look at, the, at another subject that could very well be the fulfillment of Daniel 11.44. Let's move on now. If we go and look at this article headline here on Popular Mechanics on April the 13th of 2017, entitled, It Looks Like North Korea is Ready for Another Nuclear Test. Anybody that follows this knows that North Korea and their ambition has caused a great concern with the international community about 
uh, developing nuclear weapons. They have tests fired five times already. They're intending on doing a sixth test. Uh, and of course, by the time this broadcast airs, they may have already done the sixth test, but this is the very test that, according to President Trump, could easily spark a, a war with North Korea. But what I find even more interesting is that when the President of the United States talks about removing the threat of North Korea and how that uh, Ms. Haley, the, uh, the ambassador to the United Nations for, uh, for, for, the, for the representative of the United States, is constantly speaking about that North Korea is a threat to the entire world. And I have to agree with her, it's true, North Korea is a threat to the entire world. But what is interesting in this is that if President Trump gives the authorization for the United States military to launch an attack, a preemptive strike against North Korea, you would think it's just the United States, the limited allies in the region, Japan, South Korea, going against North Korea there, possibly as well the British uh, coming in uh, as well to the United States to help deal with North Korea. You would think that this would just be a local war, but more and more China and Russia have talked about that this could escalate into World War III. Just keep that in mind. All right, now with that in mind, let's, let's go back and look again. Daniel 11, 44. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Now what I'm looking at here, I have a feeling that not only North Korea and Syria both together may be playing into the prophecy of Daniel 11:44. Syria, of course, was the first one to, to be the problem where Russia comes down and intervenes with Syria to help turn the tide there when the U.S. and Britain had been training pro-Syrian fighters inside the country of Jordan for, for a number of years to try to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. So indirectly, the two nations, the two superpowers, are actually fighting a war against one another in an indirect way. And so this is something that definitely troubles him greatly. Now, when I say troubles him, I'm not suggesting that the President of the United States is the King of the North. I don't believe that. I believe the United States or NATO's power itself could be where your King of the North it could be the military power for the king of the north. But that being stated, who would be the king himself? That's still up for grabs, I might say. But think about this just for a moment. Let's look at some more specifics and you'll see where I'm going with this. If we look over at RT, RT came out with an article here on January the 25th of 2017. China reportedly deploys ICBM near Russia's border. Now we caught this ourselves a day before uh, RT actually aired this. Well, let me share with you what RT states in, this, in their own news uh, broadcast about this. It says, Beijing has deployed advanced Donfang 41 ICBMs in the uh, Halongyang province, which borders Russia. According to the reports based on images, possibly leaked to coincide with Donald Trump's inauguration as U.S. president. In an update in a statement to Rio Novosti, the Chinese foreign ministry called the media reports on China's deployment of the ballistic missiles to the Russian border speculations and crude guesses. They go on to say in the article, the DF-41 is a three-stage solid propellant missile which is estimated to have a range of up to 15,000 kilometers and a capability of delivering up to 10 MIRV, MIRV nuclear warheads. The alleged deployment of the DF-41 near Russia's border should not be read as a threat to Russia. Military analyst Konstantin uh, Sivkov told RIA Novosti, the DF-41 missiles placed near Russia's border are a smaller threat than if they were placed deeper in the Chinese territory. Such missiles usually have a very large dead zone area within a minimal range that cannot be attacked by a weapon, which is obvious. They're right there on top of the border. There's nothing that they could come back down upon and strike. He said, adding that the ICBMs would not be able to target Russia's far east and most of eastern Siberia from the Halongang province. 
Certainly the actions of the Chinese military, if, it, if the reports prove correct, the military buildup in China is not perceived as a threat to our country, said the Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov. So, then what is the threat all about? <laughs> you know, we actually covered this ourselves on our YouTube channel, Israeli News Live, in an article entitled, China, China Moves ICBMs to the Russian Border. It was on January the 24th, 2017, as I said, a day before RT News brought out the same article. And at that time, we as well were thinking that what was going on with China, especially so much tensions over the South China Sea and the United States under the Obama administration uh, prior to President Trump taking office, that China was flexing its muscles, showing the U.S. that we do have you in our targets. We can reach mainland USA uh, easily from our far northeastern corner there. Then I also begin to look at Japan and the military bases there. They also, no doubt, come into target at that range there. But really, like Russia said, nothing else on the far east or any of these places of Russia, nothing really comes into their target there. The missile has to go outside the atmosphere and back in again. And then, you know, it's, it's got to have a certain distance to be able to do that and then come down and hit its target. As we saw in a failed uh, missile, uh, ICBM, not so much, I, should, I apologize, not a failed missile launch, but an ICBM that was launched by North Korea just recently landed in the, in the, uh, the Sea of Japan. And that missile went up some uh, 1,200 kilometers into the atmosphere, showing that North Korea has already uh, successfully put together an ICBM and came back down, in, like I said, in the Sea of Japan. Now, that was a relatively uh, short distance for the missile to travel, and whether or not they just had it crash back into the sea or if they were targeting that is, is still unclear to know what that case may be. But the point is, is that the, the threat that China moved all this uh, nuclear missiles up there was the first move to begin to catch world attention. And of course, you know, most of the people uh, in, in, in the military circles and in, in NATO, they were thinking that China was moving them there, or at least they were expressing it publicly that that was a threat for Russia. But like I said, Russia made it very clear, very quick, like no threat for them. They weren't worried about it at all. Maybe it had something to do with North Korea. Maybe because China was already seeing what happened in Syria and China was getting ready for a battle that might ensue with North Korea. Let's continue on looking at uh, more of the things that are going on. In another news article on the telegraph.co.uk on February 22nd, uh, 2016, Largest ever U.S. South Korean military drill plan as a warning to Pyongyang. U.S. will deploy a combat aviation brigade to South Korea for the duration of the maneuvers, as well as a mobile U.S. Marine brigade. Now, we already know since all this has started here back in uh, February uh, 22nd of 2016, it has been one build up after another. Now we have at least two, minimum of two, U.S. military uh, carrier strike groups that are in the region or within proximity of the region there now, and tensions continue to build. And the U.S. continues to do more and more bigger and bigger military drills there in South Korea because of the threat of North Korea. And again, I happen to realize that yes, North Korea does pose a major threat, not only to, their, uh, to, to South Korea, but also to the United States, the U.S. bases in Japan, to Japan itself. Uh, some would argue that uh, North Korea poses a threat to, to China and to Russia. I do not see that. And in fact, you may see why in just a moment. Also moving on as well as we get here, North Korea ready for war after U.S. Uh, redeploys Navy strike team, according to The Guardian. Now Korea starting to really get antsy about all this. And then we have uh, also uh, reported on the businessinsider.com April 12, 2017, China has sent 150,000 troops to its northern border. Oh my gosh, I mean, this, this is insane, the amount of troops that are being sent there. Now, what's interesting, China actually 
debunked it and said that this was not a true report, but there were other articles, including that in the Russian language, that came out and said, yes, in fact, they did relocate this 150,000 troops to the border, uh, even though China was refuting it. And according to a South Korean news source that actually is where uh, the Business Insider is quoting from, that news source there was saying that the troops are always around the North Korean border, but what's really interesting is it wasn't just that. It was even more. Already happened.com, April 13th, 2017. They put out a, a uh, tweet on their Twitter page and then added it to their, to their own website. Recent footage shows a lot of Chinese military vehicles deploying toward North Korea. North Korea's border. Now, amongst that military equi equipment happened to be one of the most advanced Russian-made S-300 uh, anti-ballistic missile systems that, that China has, that they actually purchased from Russia. And then on that, it, it really gets interesting. We get the New York Post, April 15, 2017. Title comes out on their article. It seems Trump got China to crack down on North Korea. And that began to appear in all types of Western media. That after the meeting that China had with uh, President Xi, that President Xi was now willing to do something about North Korea. And everybody was speculating that China was going to be there to stop North Korea, that they were going to take with the uh, economic relationship that the United States and China has been, been having for, for many years now, uh, that, that President Trump was not going to be so tough on China after all, and in return, China is going to rein in Kim Jong-un and make him obey the international laws. And that would be a nice thing if China really did it. I have to say, it would be a nice thing. But what a lot of people are forgetting about, and the wishful thinking, happens to be a, a China, a China uh, and North Korea's Treaty of Friendship from 1961. And as you can see on the screen back here, I know you can't read it, it's so, such small print there, but I have it uh, encircled in red right there, and I want to read to you what Article 2 says in the Treaty of Friendship. Uh, it's cooperation and mutual assistance between the People's Republic of China and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Article 2 states this, the contracting parties undertake jointly to adopt all measures to prevent aggression against either of the contracting party parties by any state. In the event of one contracting parties being subjected to the armed attack by any state or several states jointly and thus being involved in a state of war, the other contracting party shall immediately render military and other assistance by all means at its disposal. Why then does China move those, the Def, uh, uh, Dongfeng 41 intercontinental ballistic nuclear capable warheads, as many as 10 warheads per missile, there to its far east north, uh, uh, northeast uh, border? By the way, that happens to be pretty doggone close to North Korea, so it's definitely not for North Korea either. It will not be to target uh, Pyongyang, not at all. But it will reach out to the ocean where carriers may be parked. It could reach to Japan to stop a naval attack from the U.S. military bases there. And this is where the trouble comes in. And, in. and believe me, the United States knows this as well. But remember, the first one, as we can see in Daniel's prophecy, is it's tidings out of the east and out of the north, right? That's what the prophecy says. Already happened also, posted on their Twitter page, April the 26, 2017, the bulk M anti uh, anti missile defense system on a rail train car headed south on the eastern coast of Russia towards Vladivostok. Anti-missile systems to the borders with North Korea when they're talking about an influx of refugees. And, and Russia didn't just send these, the bulk M either. They have, since then, they've sent the S-300 and S-400 to their east coast as well. They have also sent in more tanks, military equipment, and all kinds of hardware. Let me just share with you some of the articles that came out. This one here in the Russian language right here is one of the, uh, the, the ones. This was in April the 26th of 2017. Uh, as you can see, clearly the Russian language is speaking about North Korea. To give it to you here in English, let's look at it. Uh, uh, Nikkei, Russian troops in the Far East will force the U.S. to show restraint towards North Korea. So that's why the Russia sent theirs there. And by the way, China 
had actually contacted Russia in help in defusing the situation with North Korea and the United States. So Russia's language says uh, the, the, the Russian troops in the Far East will force the U.S. to show restraint towards North Korea. As part of a military exercise, Russian troops approached the border of North Korea, reported Nikkei. According to the publication thereby, Russia sends a signal to the U.S. about the need to show restraint as Washington is considering the possibility of an attack on North Korean nuclear facilities. If the United States picks up a nuclear strike against Pyongyang, the Russian Far East is threatened with nuclear fallouts and an influx of North Korean refugees, the publication adds. So you don't think that Russia's not taking these things into serious consideration? And again, already happened uh, on April the 16th, 2017, showing a huge uh, armament of, of tanks and stuff headed to the border uh, of, of Vladivostok. Uh, Russia there, right on the northern border there. We also have on CNN, U.S. military, U.S. officials with an eye on North Korea. China puts bombers on high alert. And of course, they're all wondering whether or not, you know, China uh, is going to be there to actually to bring down Pyongyang. That's the wishful thinking. It says here, China's temporarily put cruise missiles capable bombers on high alert this week as the United States sees evidence that the Chinese military was preparing to respond to a potential situation in North Korea. A, a, a U.S. defense official told CNN, I don't think it's there to take down North Korea. Remember, the Chinese officials have often stated that this and the Russian officials have stated an attack by the United States on North Korea could spiral out of control into a third world war. Believe me, between the United States and North Korea, which would not take long to bring down North Korea, that's not going to cause World War III unless China and Russia get involved. So therefore we can see, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and to utterly make away many. And remember too, Daniel 39, 11 verse 39 to 42, thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. All right, we're going to get into this next week, guys. This is going to be a part two of this, but we're going to go into this next week because that dividing the land for gain is also not what you're thinking. It's not just Israel. It encompasses that whole east there. And that's after World War I, by the way. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall also into the, uh, enter into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape out of his hand even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hands also in the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Wait till next week. You will be amazed to know what those verses actually mean. We're out of time. Again, I'm so sorry for this. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Check us out on YouTube as well. Shalom.